Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Dwarf Fortress, shall we? Continuing our complete beginner's guide here in our fort. And, you know, it is worth noting that at the end of the last episode, we bumped up with migrants to a 16 population, which is tremendous because now we have a lot of dwarfs. But it's also problematic because... Uh, we we now have more demands that we need to satisfy. So we need places to sleep. We need more places to eat. We have a lot of labor to assign. But this is great. Let's do this. So somebody right here is building the trade depot. Fantastic. And we've got this stockpile with boxes and bins uh, and tables and chairs coming in. So let's go ahead and continue by expanding our operation to include perhaps what we could do here is we could either have another dormitory or we could start building individual bed chambers for the dwarves. Now I'm not sure if this has changed with the steam version but the way Dwarf Fortress used to work is Every season when migrants could arrive, there was like a calculus done by the game to determine how much extra bedding you had, how many extra food you had, and, you know, kind of just evaluated the attractiveness of your base based on these factors to determine how many migrants you have. So the more beds you have, the more food you have, uh, etc., more wealth perhaps, uh, they would send you more. So we got a lot. And, you know, we didn't have any extra beds. We had, like, what, one extra bed? But the thing is, the dormitory is calculated a little differently in terms of bedding uh, because it's not assigned to an individual. So for the time being, I think what we'll do is we will pop in here and we're going to suspend this task of making bins. We have plenty. And we're going to add a new task uh, to make beds. And we're going to repeat this task so that we could start cranking out beds. If I try to, right now, push B to build, then go to furniture and then build a bed, and then say, use closest material, um, and just kind of build a bed right here, I don't have any beds, you can see immediately. So we're out of beds, and we're gonna wait until we get some more. So we have a lot of logs, and we need to kind of create a stockpile for wood that's inside. And uh, this stockpile is everything, and then down here on our farming level, this is just one Z level down. I'm not going to really build too much more on this farming level. I'm going to leave it, you know, for these kinds of concerns and uh, go down one level. Now, this is something like my buddy Thurziz was telling me that he likes to do. And I really like the idea. It's not something I always did, but you have so many Z levels to work with. It's staggering. You're a dwarf. You're supposed to be like under the ground most of the time. So you need to think about the fact that you can just keep going down, 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 down. Uh, it, you could build structures on top. You could build castles and things like that on top of the surface if you want. Uh, but generally, you're building underground. So he likes to build every other level so that you have um, kind of like an emergency level where if you need something on the spot, you can put it on that level and you have space to work with. And that's a pretty interesting idea. Now, I'm going to say, okay, we have this dining hall. So let's start expanding it. We're going to build B Furniture. And I'm going to build some tables. And I'm going to put another table here and another table here. And then I'm actually going to build a table here. And I only have three, but that's fine. So we'll put those tables in. And then we're going to um, right-click to close, push B, go to furniture. And we're going to start throwing in chairs. And we're, remember, we're using the closest chair that they've got. Uh, and they, we need more chairs. So we really only have one. Now, you couldn't select these tiles with the boulder on it. So we need somebody to move these boulders. And the way we do that is to start creating stone stockpiles and having people just dump stone into a location so that we can uh, clear out space. Now, I'm going to set up a whole bunch of mining. So I'm going to make like a giant room here and that doorway here and the doorway here. This could be a stone stockpile right away actually uh, and we can even expand this to as far over as we can go like so 
And now I don't know why there's a table right there. I think I must have accidentally built that table. That's kind of funny. So I'm going to build this here and I build this here. And then I'm going to right click. I'm going to click on this table and I'm going to just say uh, that we don't want it here. So um, we could dump it, but you know we don't really want to do that. We just want to remove the building. And then somebody will put it in a stockpile. Okay. And this room is just kind of like an empty stairwell room. But I'm going to actually... Yeah. Okay, so this is actually not going to be stone stockpile. This is going to be wood stockpile. And I'm going to build another carpenter's workshop up here. I want to have two carpenter's workshops because we want to have two people building stuff out of wood for the time being. That's fine. I usually, like at some point, I, I almost like to have somebody set always building like barrels so that I never run out and I can brew all my drinks and building a lot of bins and things like that. Uh, and then we're going to need some more stone workers workshops as well because uh, we want more things out of this. So let's actually go build workshop. stone worker and let's just put another one right there right click and this is great and i'm going to say okay good we need to go push y and open up the labor screen and we need to just kind of say all right who can mine well we only have three miners right now which is fine who can cut wood everybody who has an axe can do this that's fine um we're letting everybody plant Stone cutters, everybody can do that. Engravers? Okay. I'm gonna say only selected can do this. And I'm gonna just pick somebody at random, like this herbalist, and I'm gonna be like, you're my engraver. I love to have one engraver that I assign early. What's the engraver do? They smooth and detail carving beautiful reliefs and intricacies into the stone making the area more valuable and attractive and what i like to do right at the beginning is just have one person who's doing this the whole game so that they become amazing and that they can do it rapidly um, everybody is hauling which is fine i'm actually going to say he uh is specialized so he's not going to haul he's only going to do this job and then at this point, I'm going to go to uh, this button right here that looks like a kind of square piece of stone. This is smoothing. You can click on this or you can push V. And I'm going to say, let's smooth it up. I like to start in the dining room. And actually, I'm going um, to select the whole thing like this, even the tiles around it. And now you'll see there's this kind of like overlay. I'm going to right click to close it. If I push V, you can see it again. They're going to smooth everything that they can. Now, um, I'll right-click. Stuff that is not stone, like this loam cavern floor, they can't smooth or carve. But if it is stone, they can. I'm going to unpause the game. And we're going to see how many people can get to work. We kind of need the miners to do their thing for a moment. A lot of people are going to start planting. I'm going to add new task. Um, oh, I add. I said brew drink from fruit. Well, of course we can't do that. That's the wrong button. Okay. Yeah, we need to brew it from a plant. So we have plants to brew. That's easy. And now this guy's going to be brewing it up. Now, I'm going to push. I'm going to pause it. I'm just going to talk about something. Right now, I don't care. All right, about what's going on with certain jobs. But in the kitchen, okay, I'm in the work detail screen right here. You can see standing orders. You can see, um, you know, like use any cloth, collect web, slaughter animals. Here's the kitchen. We have what, 30 plump helmets around. You could change the permissions. You have like what stones you can use. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. But Right now I have everybody doing everything and I'm, I'm not really specializing, but what you can do is you can click on the U key to look at your citizens and this is another way to kind of see what they're doing. Now this is perfect. We haven't talked about this screen yet. It's the far left button in the bottom left of the screen on, and it looks like a dwarf head and you just push this 
And if you push U, you can open this or click on this, and it shows you all your people, all your citizens, all your pets, others, which are these wild animals, and then anybody who's dead or missing. And this will tell you what everybody's doing. So like three people right now are smoothing the wall, which is confusing because I thought I assigned that. I'll go back to the labor panel with engravers, and I said only selected can do this. So maybe that counts as stone cutting. I don't know. Um, but anyway, they uh, some people are smoothing that, and that's fine. They just have a job to do. Now I'm going to go back to the uh, creatures panel. By the way, like all of these are kind of like you can click on these keys, but they also represent these tabs up here at the top. So once you get to this screen, you can kind of uh, mess with you don't have to click down here anymore. You can just move around using this as a navigation. Now, this will tell you what everybody's doing. And it'll tell you, like, if somebody has a job or doesn't have a job. So it's a good place to find, like, hey, this person has no job. Like, this engraver has no job. And they have no job because, indeed, engraving is a separate task from smoothing. So what I'm going to do is go back to labor, and I'm going to turn this person back into a generalist so that they can do other stuff until an engraving job comes along. Now, here, you can see what they're doing, and you can also just kind of click on your dwarves. Like, so this, for example... Who is brewing the drink? This stone crafter, right? So this guy's job is like stone crafter. And if you click on them, it, you can right click on them from in the citizen panel. From the screen, what you can do is like you can pick somebody and you can say, all right, hey, show me where they are. Um, and you can push this button to leave the menu and center on them. Or you can push the magnifying glass to go to their character sheet. So right now, for example, who's brewing the drink? This stone crafter. I'm going to click the magnifying glass, and you see this is where they are. And then, like, what are their skills? So this is the dwarf screen. And it's telling me everything about them, their overview, what items they have. Like, this is the clothes that they're wearing, all right? So you can see they have these pants on. This shows you what their skills are. And you can see they're a talented stone crafter. That is good for stone crafting, but not for brewing. So I don't want him to do this job. So I'm going to be like, dude, stop doing this job. So let's go over here and um, let's try to figure out a way to get somebody else to brew the drink. So I can say this is free for anybody to use, right? But instead, I can go to the workers tab at this still and say, hey, I only want somebody who is good at this to be doing that. And right now, I want this person, the armorer, to do this. And I'm specializing them on this, which is just this job. No, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll say they can do that. All right. And then let's unpause the game. And then I'm going to go up, pushing E, and Stonecrafter. Like, you're not doing anything. Um, you should be doing this. And I'm going to say, I'm going to assign Stonecraft man to this job. This guy. And he's now the master of the workshop. And I want him to specialize in his assigned tasks. So I'm going to unpause the game. Now, it's, what's interesting is if I... Uh, I'm going to repause it. If I pause the game again and then I click on you to look at these people, like many of these uh, people have become something beyond their current job because they're smoothing the wall. Like, so right now... You know, because everybody's doing this one job of smoothing, they, like, might start to skill up at smoothing. Uh, but that's fine. Now, I want my none of my miners to be doing this, though. I want my miners to just always be mining. So I'm going to go uh, push, go to the labor screen or push Y, and I'm going to go to mining, and I'm going to say only select to do this, and I'm going to specialize all of my miners. I don't want them doing anything except mining. Unpause it. There's so much for them to be mining. That's what we need them to do. Okay, good. Uh, well, that's not my guy who's come here. Anyway, we're going to assign new tasks, and I need doors. So I'm going to go to doors, and I'm going to repeat this. Let's get a bunch of doors coming out, and we've got beds coming out. Great. So now, um, you know what? I said I wasn't going to build anything on this floor, and I completely lied. I'm going to open this up.
I'm going to build another um, dormitory right here just to give people a place to sleep. And I just mine that out, unpause, and let's go. Okay, so they're all smoothing away because it's like the main job right now. And people have actually put down thrones. Oh, they did put the thrones where the boulder was, so I misspoke about that. Um, they were able to move the boulders out of the way and put those down. Great. And somebody is making thrones, hopefully. Okay, good. And we're brewing drinks, I hope. This is a food stockpile. And already you can see, like, our drinks are going up. And take a look at this flooring right here. So we are um, smoothing this. And it changes the way that it looks when it's smoothed. Even the walls. Like, you can tell they've been smoothed. All right, they're mining this out. Once this gets done, we're going to make this a giant stone stockpile. Stone stockpiles are kind of annoying because they fill up so quickly. But I'd love to get all these stones moved out of the way. Oh, wait, this was going to be our wood stockpile anyway. Sorry about that. I lied. Um, we're going to go ahead and then just make this our stone stockpile. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to add this. And then I'm going to just extend this way up here. When you're mining, you never want to be on the edge because it'll come out of your fort. You always want to leave like a one square buffer so that you aren't going through a wall and allowing enemies access. It's going to go ahead and go here and here. Unpause the game. Petitions. What is this? What do you want? They want a temple and a priest. Uh, not right now. It's a very religious area, so they, they must want that immediately. We don't have... That's just not on our dock it at the moment. Okay, I'm going to then push P to make a stockpile. I'm going to push the plus button to add it. And I'm going to turn this whole thing into a stockpile. And I'm going to uh, accept. And we're going to make this wood only. And then we're going to right click. And then I'm going to um, click on this stockpile. And I'm going to uh, just try to remove this stockpile, basically. Um, let me see. Oh, no, no, here we go. Um... I want to erase this whole stockpile. View stockpile. And here we go. Remove the stockpile permanently. Click on that. So you click view stockpile. And now you'll see the stockpile ropes and icons are gone. There's no stockpile here. And they'll start moving the wood inside. Unpause it. Right click. This is all nicely smoothed now for the most part. I can assign. I can push V and have them like, you know, smooth more of this if it's possible and then they might not be able to get under the placed furniture which is fine now they're going to start moving um wood into this room you can see all right so now we're making i'm going to right click to close that up we're making beds and we're making thrones and we're making doors good i'm going to go down this room is already done so we're going to build a separate dormitory down here so that we have places for everyone to sleep. So we're going to push B. We're going to go to furniture and we're going to build beds. And I'm just going to start throwing in um, as many beds basically as I possibly can down here. Like this. And then I'm even going to build beds uh, like that. And that should be good. Right click and then I'm going to build and I'm going to just try to throw in a door. And put a door here and a door here. You kind of want to have doors wherever they're sleeping. Not only so that you can mark the area, but because uh, you want to contain noise and stuff. All right, good. And we don't have a door yet. That's fine. So I've marked all of these things for them to build. You can see they're ghosted in. They're starting to put in the lumber. Okay, fantastic. And you can just, if you want, go down here, push U, and see what everybody's doing. So they're, like, making doors. They're digging. Uh, somebody's attending a meeting, which is hysterical. Um, this guy is conducting a meeting. So let's go to that. Oh, he's and he's doing it back here. So that's a problem. All right. So what we want to do immediately 
Uh, we kind of have to... Uh, we need one more door. Ah, we need the door first. Okay, unfortunately. Hopefully she can finish that door. They're having a meeting, and the meeting leader likes to do that. But when you start Dwarf Fortress, your meeting place is F1, at where your wagon used to be, even if there's no wagon anymore. That's where they're going to use as their meeting place, and we are going to build us a new meeting place that's not outside. If your dwarves want to throw parties, um, they'll do it, you know, at your meeting place, etc. So we don't want that. I need you to build that door so I can, uh, can make this closed. Give me a door. Do we have a door? Hopefully we do. Let me see if she's done. There we go. Perfect. All right. So now that once they set in this door, then uh, I'm going to go down. This is all built. Look at this. So we're going to go to zones, and we're going to kind of say um, dormitory. And we're going to click here, and we're going to say uh, accept. So this is another dormitory. So now everybody has a place to sleep. All right, and we're going to go up, unpause the game. And now this door is done. So what we can immediately do is I'm going to build furniture, chair, as many chairs as I can get into this dining room. As many chairs as we have. Go ahead and put those in. If you've got them, you've got them. That's great. And then build tables, furniture, table. Put one here, put one here. No more. Okay. And then... I'm going to go to zone, and we're going to say, remember, you can overlap your zones in this game, which is awesome. We're going to first select dining hall, and we're just going to select this whole thing, even the outside walls, dining hall. And we're going to say accept. It's a big dining hall. And then we're also going to make this our meeting area right in here. Same thing, meeting area, accept. So it's overlapping meeting area. It's a meeting hall, and it's a dining hall. And we're just going to right-click, and these zones, uh, you should see them right here. Now, well, let me make sure that we actually got the dining hall registered there. There we go. Okay. All right. So, at this point, once you make a meeting hall and a dining hall, you'll see your people congregate at your meeting hall to just chill, maybe, and at your dining hall, definitely, to eat. So that's what they're going to be doing. And uh, we have another petition to build a, a... We need a temple and a priest. Fine, I approve this. Uh, they really, really want this happening. Okay, so we can build a temple. All right, fine. Now this room is done up here. So I'm going to push P, and I'm going to um, add a stockpile that's like way up here like this, and then we're going to accept. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to continue painting it so that I add this as well, and I accept, and then this is gonna be just stone. And then we're gonna um, right click, and you'll see there's a big stone icon there, so hopefully it'll start moving stuff accordingly. Unpause it. All right, now this is looking great. Now I'm actually gonna push V, and I'm gonna not just do smoothing, I'm going to click engraving, and I'm going to have the engraver go to town on our dining hall. Great. Okay, and I'm going to build a, another workshop, which is one more carpenter. And we'll just kind of put them... Oh, uh, this is fine, right there. And how many doors do I have? Gonna start putting doors everywhere. Oh, we need another door out here for sure. Great, door on the food. We're gonna need another food stockpile pretty soon. Okay, right click, go down. Let's see how our food's doing. All right, you can see um, this is like some drink that we made. We're growing the plump helmets, it looks great. And somebody is brewing the drink, fantastic. Okay. Now, when you look at our... Only three people are unhappy. Two people are, like, super happy. So let's click on um, you and see... Okay, so this stone crafter and this fisher dwarf 
have no labor. And that's because I've specialized them into mining. So you got to watch out for this. Uh, an animal has grown to become a stray water. So we had a baby. These are the migrants. Um, somebody's become a carpenter. We've struck a new mine. The dog is fighting. It's summertime. Okay. So the game used to really easily show you like how many idling laborers you had. And it was always a concern. Now you just kind of have to push you and just look in here and just check every once in a while. And what we want to do is we're going to go down to this other Z level and I'm going to push mining and we're going to start uh, tunneling basically some hallways like this. And we don't have to worry at all anymore about what's above us because we're so far down and we're going to start this level is going to be where I'm going to dig this out and it's going to be massive. I'm going to start making bedrooms. Now, I like to make three by three bedrooms. So I'm going to kind of click these like this. And, you know, you make a three by three bedroom like this. And then you give them a doorway. And I'm going to make a bedroom for every dwarf that we have. I like to do this. Some people make two by two bedrooms. You can make even smaller bedrooms. I like to make pretty large bedrooms for my dwarves. Right. And then um, this looks good. And you can always uh, make hallways and things to get around. But I like to keep my dwarves happy with nice bed chambers like this. Okay. So you see I've kind of planned out uh, some bedrooms. And then, like, around here you could say, all right, I'm going to build another hallway. And then we can uh, sweep down here and have these work like this and then have a hallway that's like goes down to here and then we just repeat like this just make a bunch of bedrooms you this is a little bit off like maybe i'm not thrilled with this uh because i'd rather have this hallway go through yeah i'm gonna actually do that and then i'm going to uh i'm gonna edit this just a bit so what I'm going to do is uh, erase that mining stuff and then go back to mining like this and then select it like this. Perfect. So this way, and you can even have this be like the corner penthouse with two doors if you want. The dwarves can easily get in and out. You don't want them walking forever, so you want your hallways to kind of like, you know, wrap around. You can plan those in first if you want. It doesn't have to be perfect. Gosh, none of my stuff ever is, but it's just something to think about. Like, you want this to be, you know, maybe a hallway going like this. And this is going to give... I like to do stuff like this because this is going to give my miners a job to do for a long time. So I'm going to unpause it. You can immediately see all my miners are getting to work. And I'm going to right click and close this up. And then you can see that like everybody is doing something that the herbalist is not because that's my engraver. And then the expedition leader is not doing anything either uh, because that's my, I guess they want to cut trees down. Uh, but there's, there should be plenty of stuff to engrave. Now they're all doing stuff. Sometimes they'll say no job and they do have a job. They're just taking a moment like, and they'll get a job in a moment. But everybody should be hauling stone and, and wood at the very least. And then uh, I'm going to set some more trees to chop. Like over here. Not too far away from the base, but there you go. So we've got ourselves with some workshops that we've built. And some nice big stockpiles. Now something you can do uh, if you want. And I like to do this with saving time. Is you can just go ahead and make stockpiles in the room that your workshop's in. And it will automatically, obviously, not put it on your workshop. And then you can just make this stockpile. You accept it in the upper left. And, you know, most of the stuff we're going to be building here is furniture. So you just make it a furniture stockpile. And then you right-click to close. And then we say, you know what, we want another stockpile. Um, and I'll put one in here, which is, oops, also a furniture stockpile. you got to accept it before you right click to close and then there you go furniture and then I'll do the same thing over here and this will just help us so that like when these crafts dwarves get done making whatever they're making 
they will just immediately step down and put it here and then people can move it we have a more general stockpile here but this is kind of just a catch-all space eventually we're going to start building stockpiles and such that are very very specific to the task so we'll accept this stockpile and furniture and right click good this is also going to be you know an area where we can assign jobs so we're making beds a lot of them and uh, I'd like to get some more doors now you can make stone doors so uh, let's see about barrels I'm gonna just repeat this task uh, that's fine and I right click because I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna check this kind of stockpile that we built and there's there's some empty barrels here there's also a bunch of empty beds so we can turn off beds and uh, so I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to say, okay, turn this off, add new task, and can you make, well, we're going to need one altar, <laughs> and we're going to need, uh, I'll make a, a couple of buckets, just some random stuff that I might want for now, and then what else do I want to make? We have doors. Uh... We can make chairs, you know, and just have some wooden chairs. Wooden chests are good, too, for storage. I'll make some chairs. That's fine. And then we'll repeat that. Okay. Right click. Now, something I thought was funny is, you see this dwarf right here? They have a sad face. And you want to keep your people happy. So in the upper center of the screen, you can see their moods. And you can just click on them, left click, and like you can go down here into this bottom box and see what's going on. Like, why are you unhappy? And so this person was annoyed having a drink without using a goblet cup or mug, and they didn't like being caught in the rain. So because we're going to basically eliminate being in the rain for most of our dwarves, this will not be a problem anymore. Now, you can also see here's their skills, and you can see, okay, unmet needs. Um, they want a good meal, uh, they want to admire some art. They want to be with their family. Okay. And then this is their personality. They're not in a military squad. This says they have no position. Like they don't have an official job. Like mayor, bookkeeper or something. This is their health. Again, you can see what they're equipped with. Here's their health problems. And these tabs you can explore. They have sub tabs. Like any wounds or treatment. Once we get medical dwarves and stuff like that. Here's their skills. Combat skills. Social skills. This becomes important if you're choosing somebody to be like your mayor or your expedition leader or something. Um, other skills. And then uh, their knowledge. And then you can go into... Okay, what rooms does this person have, this dwarf? Do they have a... They don't have their own bedroom yet. Um, they don't have a personal dining room or a personal tomb. Uh, and then you can go to their actual labor. And so they have their own individual labor screen. And right now they're on. They'll do anything. But you can specialize them here and say, like, I only want them... I don't want them to do fishing. Or you say, only we'll do assigned tasks. Actually, I think that check mark meant they will do that, um, not won't do that. But it was red. It was kind of intimidating looking. But you can just go to Y and go to the labor screen and kind of work it from this angle instead. But everyone brings up a good point, which is they don't have cups to drink from. So if I were to go here, right, and I were to say add new task and, you know, make a cup, I can't make a goblet. We can't. So wood is not the way to do that. If I were to go here and I were to say, um, add new task. No cup. No goblet. Because these are not the right workshops. So this is going to be a big step for us, which is providing a workshop to create mugs. Now you might say, well, what's the big deal? We'll find that out really soon. I'm going to unpause the game. Now, is my engraver ever going to get on this job? Engraver, what are you doing? Uh, looks like we have struck something else. Now, we can go down to this is our bedroom level. Look at this. Our miners are 
carving out all these personal bedrooms, which is awesome. And you can see we're really, really growing food well. Um, and you can click on this dwarf. Why are they unhappy? Uh, they didn't... They were caught in the rain. They didn't have a cup of, or a mug. And then some of these dwarves, if you click on them, they're upset because I kept rejecting their petition for a temple for the Coven of Coloring. So they want some religion, so we're going to have to build that for them. So... I guess I'll just, you know, begin the makings of some kind of a temple area for these dwarves that are interested in this. And I'm not going to cut anything here because uh, this will go outside and we don't want that. All right. And then we'll go down, unpause it. And I'm going to actually push labor. I'm going to uh, right-click push labor. Where is my engraver? What are you doing? Here. You. Engraver, what are you up to? Store item and stockpile. Right. So we can um, make this person specialized now. You can do a lot of these commands you can access from different points. So if we went to the labor screen, we could also do this. But I'm going to get this person back to uh, engraving. So hopefully they'll come over here and just start engraving. We want this whole dining room to be finished. And once they're done storing the item in the stockpile, they should come do that. They're eating. All right, fine. And this is the game. You can't, like, be like, hey, go engrave. You can... What, the best you can usually do is, like, tell them to do stuff and then eliminate all other jobs, and then eventually they'll get to it, is kind of how dwarves work. All right, so what are you building? Thrones, and you're making, what, doors? That's perfect. Uh, how many thrones do we have? So one thing you can do, you can see we have one, two thrones right here. And you can go up and see, do we have any thrones? We have three, four, five. Once we get a bookkeeper, it'll be easier to count these things. But just visually, you can go to your stockpiles. There's doors, there's barrels. This is looking great. I'm going to go ahead and build, um, you know, some doors right here. Just drop in. Uh, looks like we have claystone doors. That's fine build uh, door uh, door and I'm going to say use closest material again and just hit, there we go have it like this those are going to be doored off there's a door up here that looks good uh, give me a door here and here now I like having uh, we're, we're out of doors I like having doors and we're going to need doors in these bedrooms too everywhere uh, okay. We're going to just right-click because it was mad because we didn't have any doors. People are sleeping in the dormitory. That looks great. Now, I'm going to see how many thrones we have. I'm going to go to build, furniture, uh, chair, and we're going to use closest material, keep building after placement. And I'm going to try to build a chair everywhere that there isn't a chair right and so these all look like they have uh chairs like that okay so that actually looks pretty good now it might not work there we go so we, they've got, you can see they're putting in chairs all the way around this massive table that we have so i'm going to tell them now um who's making the chairs you are we're going to kind of add a new task. We're going to stop doing that. And we need some other stuff. So what do we want? Well, I'll tell you what we want. First of all, I would like uh, the chest. Wooden chests. Great. And we're going to repeat that. The reason I'm making chests is because I'm going to go down pushing C twice to our bedroom level. I like to put certain things in everybody's bedroom. A bed a door, maybe a table and chair, a chest of drawers, maybe an armor stand, really cool decorative stuff. 
Now, some jobs, like a bookkeeper or a manager, things like this, they require, like, they have an office. So you need to, like, give them certain things for an office. So, like, if you click zones and you want to make an office, for example, um, it says a chair or a throne is required. So you need certain things for the position to be filled. And I like to look at that dwarf using the wheelbarrow. That's awesome to move the stones around. Love it. We actually need some more wheelbarrows. I'm going to go up. What are you making? Barrels? Okay. And we're going to add a new task. I'm not going to say um, uh, wheelbarrows. And I'm going to just kind of like, I'd like some more wheelbarrows. You can put a certain number of wheelbarrows and you can change it at every stockpile. You don't need them at all stockpiles. You really just need them at like places with big things, lumber, rocks, stuff like that. Sometimes furniture, but um, that looks great. Okay. And then I'm going to actually... It might look weird that I'm going to keep making barrels... Uh, but you need a lot. All right, how are we doing on barrels? Look, all of this, we're filling this up, right? So this is Dwarven Wine Barrel, and this is Dwarven Wine, this is Dwarven Wine, and they're making it right here. So they're taking the plump helmet, and they're turning it into drink. Drink is uh, incredibly important, more important than food, strangely. Um, they drink for everything, and they don't need water. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, alcohol is just fine. It's actually preferred, and we'll put that there. When we are making, brewing the drink from plant, we do not damage the seeds, so we just get the seeds back and can plant them, and then they can eat just the plump helmets uncooked. You actually don't want to cook the plump helmets because if you start trying to cook the plump helmets for food, the problem is that you will then lose the seeds and then you will run out of plump helmets. So don't cook them, just brew them into drinks. All right, and it looks like, uh, what, we're getting to a new season here? Yeah, it's autumn. Okay, let's see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to pause the game and just read these announcements. Uh, ooh, look, this guy made a masterpiece wooden barrel. That's cool. Two people have become miners, and um, they're out of logs. So that means that we need to give people the job of, ooh, wow, this is beautiful. I haven't played so much on the Steam version, but look, it's autumn, so there's uh, these tile sets of, like, the leaves changing. That's great. Now, somebody needs to be cutting wood. There are actually are trees designated for chopping, but nobody's doing it. So I'm going to go to Y for labor. I'm going to go to woodcutters and only select to do this. I'm going to actually, I'd love to have more people able to do this, right? So the woodcutter, well, why not? I'm going to tell everybody who can do this, who isn't doing something, that you are able to actually go woodcut. You can't tell everyone to do it because you have to have an axe, but uh, the engraver, I don't want doing that. Wait, why are you... Wait a minute. Why is my engraver... High Master Engraver. Yeah, you should be... This is a dabbling engraver. I have the wrong person doing this. Okay. I got confused because they had engraver. No, no, no. I want my High Master Engraver doing this. Whoops. Okay. Yeah, they, they, it, they said engraver because they just picked up a little bit of skill in it, but no, 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 that's what I want you doing. And you, um, no, I don't want you doing that, but I do want you to go to uh, Creatures, and yeah, see, on this screen, it's like abbreviated, their titles, so you don't see that that person is actually, you know, um, something else. Like, they, they're a dabbling engraver, but I needed them to do something else. Anyway, um, now you can see they actually are engraving. Somebody's working on it. Just, well, one person. Yeah, there we go. So there's our engraver who's just busting it up. 
And when it's done, you'll see that it's no longer ghosted. It looks like this. It says detailed claystone floor. And you can actually, once it's engraved, you can left click on it. And it says engraved on the floor is a masterfully designed image of Aretha, the defective syrup, the Yeti, and tamed sable reeves, the human by Godin. Tamed Sabre Reeves is striking down um, Aretha, the defective syrup. The artwork relates to the killing of the Yeti by the human tamed Sable Reeves in the Horn of Droplets in 82. So that tile on the ground has this piece of artwork commemorating a event that happened in our procedurally generated history. So how awesome is that? Um, I'm going to actually leave this empty. And they canceled their... so. You see how there's no tasks here? It's because there was no wood, so they canceled it, and now they're out doing other stuff. And this guy's actually chopping the tree. So now um, the people are chopping the tree. And we're getting logs back in here. But we don't need that much wood. Uh, mainly, once you craft the initial wave of, like, furniture and stuff, you need wood for barrels and bins, and then, like, crutches, splints wheelbarrows stuff like that but stone can pretty much be used for most things so i'm going to go ahead and build a by the way we don't have a door right here give me a door right there and you can see all these doors that we've made so that's amazing and we made some chests but i'm going to go ahead and say we've got enough chairs so i'm going to click on this i'm going to cancel this i'm going to add another task uh which is um I'm going to go, I'd like, I love these cabinets in the bedrooms, so I'm going to make cabinets. And then now we can go push C, push C, and go down here. You can see the bedrooms are coming in, and then we can just start building beds. Push B to build, go to furniture, put in beds, and then we can just start dropping beds in to these rooms, wherever you want the bed to be. And then... Once we get doors on... Oops, uh, th that one needs to be canceled. Here, get rid of that. Cancel construction. Build. Furniture. Bed. Once we get these rooms with doors, we can then start assigning them to individual dwarves. And that's all the beds that we have for the moment. So that's the other thing you need wood for is beds. Alright, so uh, we'll make some more beds... But let's get all those placed. And then I'm going to right click and say, hey, can you add beds? And repeat that task. Sweet. All right, everybody. Well, look how good we're doing now. We have assigned, you know, most of our migrants some labor. And we've got some massive stockpiles for wood and stone going. We are, we created a dining hall. We smoothed it, and now we're engraving it. We put a big old dining table for everyone to come in when they want to eat. And we have made two carpenter's workshops and two stone working workshops. You might not even need this many. I like to just have some, so if I need things rapidly, like I can just turn it on in several workshops. Down one level, we built a, another dormitory. And we are brewing drink. We're doing fine on that. And then now we're starting to cut out a whole level of just like personal dwarf bedrooms. Up here, we have dug this and we're going to have to build an altar and assign a priest so that we can have this temple because people are demanding it. Okay, so to build the altar, we actually push B and we go to furniture and it's called an offering place. And then we just say, you know, use closest material. We did build one altar. And then we can build a door on this. There we go. And uh, we could start getting a temple of some kind going so that this demand is met. Perfect. All right, everybody. I hope you're still finding this series to be useful and fun. We have a lot of work to do as we manage, uh, you know, getting ready and preparing and hunkering in. But we're making a great start. And... Thank you so much for watching and for all of your tips. Uh, if you're a veteran Dwarf Fortress player and you want to share your knowledge and help new players get into the game, I really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Take care.